the, the conversation is, uh, is interesting because um, they all talk about governance, but uh, in my uh, case, it's very specific. I was, uh, it, like, it's a practical case. I um, just want to show the, the how, um, how Africans are moving, uh, like, um, between countries to countries. Like, in this case, I'm taking the north of Benin, uh, which is a very interesting area where you can find a lot of people coming from Ghana, coming from Mali, coming from Senegal to Nigeria. And I did like five years investigation, I mean a research field there in the in framework of the project, German, of a German project. And uh, I was interested um, to study the marriage migrations, but because I think this is an aspect that um, sometime um, in West Africa, so far, uh, generate limited interest. So people are not talking about this. If you check the literature, international literature, you see these kind of topics in countries, in, in Asian countries like China or this kind of country. They are well studied. Oh, but um, I have maybe it exists, but I have not seen um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wider angle how they studied it in Africa. But in, in those countries, it is. Uh, is uh, mean I is well studied. Um, then uh, in some areas like uh, climate variability has influenced the marriage migration in certain situation. Um, although they allowed a clear desire to access to the resources, this is I forgot to tell. It is a, a chapter that will be published uh, this year, end of this year, to a book, mm -hmm. and uh, it is also sent to the organizer, and you can also uh, have the chapter or, or if you are interested. But I'm just trying to resume what I have uh, said in this paper. Not to <coughs> but, um, the link between climate viability and marriages, um, uh, migration can help to understand the production capacities of available resources. Like if you talk about fer fer fertile lands, uh, like the pressure on land, and then you can also see these extra adaptive strategies for environmental change. Uh, it is not surprising that a significant uh, part of the energy of social scientists, like working on environmental issues, has been absorbed most of the time in the concept of social construction of, of nature. But um, this is what we try to do um, to, to, to avoid, and we said that uh, we studies that marriages under consensus or not, are not are also good indicators of the impact of the environment. But above all, they allow to perceive the moral responsibilities in the management and distribution of resources within the people, uh, the family, the community. And uh, if you take like alliances, um, they also make, uh, also make it possible to observe evolution of the behavior um, given population in space. That is that I was interested to look at in the north of, north of Benin. Um, if you talk about, uh, you talk about um, concepts uh, and theories, we use um, this, um, we have checked some studies like uh, Lonergan who who, who call for human reaction and adaptation to environmental change, like uh, Fish and Nielsen also, uh, that have attempted to demonstrate the link between climate change and migration uh, through flood-based models and deliver life. Also, what was interesting for us is to, to see this kind of uh, cultural approach, uh, which, which, uh, which uh, defended that has a strong symbolism of social organization, and uh, that also uh, influenced this, uh, the modalities of social functioning. Right? my colleague in the beginning was explaining. The material we have taken from uh, the interviews uh, highlight the need to be extremely careful about how concepts such as uh, environment uh, and climate have been understood, and especially um, uh, yeah, um, and, and especially about relationships that people maintain with, with, with them. It's also important for in our research. Uh, most of the people, they understand uh, 
that it is very risky to assume that there is an entity called environment, a single entity, that it is distinct from economic resources um, of, or elements of subsistence, of, if you take also human mobility or social reproduction, the geographical boundaries and perception of value. But we said that the links with the change of nature are often very indirect. And sometimes um, it's difficult to make the relationship about almost forcing, uh, without almost forcing the categories uh, to signify certain things. It is not always certain that migration, or perhaps better international migration to Benin or elsewhere, we have studied, um, is always caused by something that would be called environmental change. But we have to be very careful on this definition because people they tend to assimilate everything to environmental change. In this study, we, we didn't go in that direction. Then migration, other social and moral demand remain an internal datum of the environment. So um, when we talk about distributive justice, uh, we refer um, to this paper we have. Uh, Applied. Um, it for us it implies approval or, or blame. So we have this all, all, this, all these theories. We take the roles. Um, um, roles spoke about primary goods, which is uh, you you can also take uh, authors like uh, Amar Amar Yassen and uh, other people that think that it is rather the opportunity offered individual capabilities approach or accessible functioning which should be given to a priority, not the primary goals. This is also uh, a kind of discussion we have in the theory paper, and that also I, can, I, I cannot uh, stand long, but you can have it in the paper to, to have uh, more definition. So if you take the methodology and case, study, case studies, this study was based on qualitative methods and ethnographic survey. And uh, um, it focuses on the method of ecological references, interferences, pardon, that I don't know if you know somebody called Pickett, who did this kind of studies also. Um, uh, we try to analyze the multicausal nature and of the hypothesis with reference to migration in the region. And it also provides uh, a number of indications on migrant representation um, of environmental change at the local level, but also in the larger scale. Then we interviewed several nationalities, like uh, Beninese, Togolese, Okinawe, Nigerian, Senegalese, uh, and Cameroonians. It is very, sometimes you can see that this uh, part of Benin is a poorer spa of Benin, but you see a lot of migrants, and it is very surprising. Because you could say they should go down south, but they are coming up north. And the border with uh, Burkina Faso is playing a very interesting role. And then on the other side, you have Togo. It is also, you have a big flux of commercial trade, trade between those countries and people coming also uh, in search of land. And, uh, and you have the, 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 the Penjadi River also that can provide uh, some time. Uh, you have some land near the Penjadi River where you can do some agricultural, agricultural Okay, um, then to go to this point about uh, north of Berlin, as I explained, is a kind of mosaic of people coming from different neighboring countries. You know? um, the history of the settlements of people and population of Benin, and more precisely in the northwest, is known and documented. If you go to the uh, National Archives in Porto Novo, you can find a lot of documentation on this. Uh, Mm, with the French colonization, they left a lot of documentation so you can see how people in this part of Benin were moving and coming, uh, going and coming out, uh, from coming on from different parts of, of the region. Um, the, the movement of the people are therefore closely linked to the different combination of change and environmental conditions. So in the archive you can see why people move. They can explain you, okay, they move because they have a big drought, uh, 1926, for example, you can say, and at other years of the of this epoch, and it is it is very interesting also, uh, but also to the political and the social factors internal to family. Like you have this kind of requisitions, uh, collection of colonial tax, 
uh, overcrowding, uh, abduction of girls and pretenders, forced marriages, women's fugues, bad luck and famine. All these kind of things you can see them in the archives. And even now, if you do the interview with people, they can also explain all these stories that they are coming and going and coming. You know, uh, uh, but what we have seen there is uh, mostly we have the Burma. They also call them Gurmanche, that are originated from the area of Japaga, so in Burkina Faso, because uh, Burkina Faso is like uh, uh, 20 or I would say 50 kilometers up, uh, <coughs> up north, and then <coughs> they, are, um, they, they come to look for fertile land. Then you have the Jerma, uh, they are uh, native from the Republic of Niger. They are also fishing, they come to fish. Then you have uh, <coughs> the Fulani. Uh, the immigration still, uh, still is still in progress and uh, has a very diverse origin. So um, for a decade now, we have also Malians coming from the, <coughs> uh, the, the Bamana, Hasonke, and Malinke ethnic groups. And they are originating from the southwestern Mali region of Kai, well, they, they write it Kai S, but it's pronounced Kai, which is very close to Senegal. Um, these people also, they come there to, in search of land. And I have this, several families in this area, and then they, they stay six months, and then, then they go back to, to Mali. Um, <coughs> we have the Fanti, the fishermen. They are great navigators and they all belong to the Akan group, if I'm right. I don't think so. And uh, they have developed a historical migration in, in Benin. And they are the people who, who construct the boats. And then they put the boat in the rivers. And then the people hire them because they, they can construct boats and then sell them to the fishermen. And the interesting thing is the fishers are not the natives. The fishers are the fanties or other people coming from different other zones. Then you have the, the native, they call them the Biali or the Berba, this is the name they call them. And, uh, well, uh, that's the meaning is men of the bush. Um, they would come from the south of, uh, from the south and of Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. And today they, they are spread in all this region of Dasari in Gaonde. Then uh, mostly in the cities of Materi and Kobli. If somebody knows this part. Materi and Kobli are the main city of the Bialy. We live there. Then I come tightly to the to the topic of marriage, environmental moral and uh, moral demands and, and resources. Uh, if we take this uh, area of northern Benin, uh, according to Cornavan, who, who was a French writer, um, uh, geographer or something like this, the advantages of the Atakora mountain, which is a big mountain, I think that was uh, still Ghana, no? If I'm not uh, on right. Um, <coughs> uh, uh, made North Benin a very early attraction for the population of neighboring countries. Because People choose those part of, the, of uh, Benin because um, close to the mountain, they could say they could tell you you have less diseases and you have uh, the, the, you have fertile land. Then you have uh, also you can have better health than other part of, the, of, the, of other countries. <coughs> um, What, what is most interesting in our study is that, is that the young girls, we have, this kind of, we have this kind of robbery of young girls. We call them, uh, it is them uh, who are found in the heart of, of, of the situation that we are, we are looking at. Uh, Sometimes it is the woman who agrees to leave her parents home and to join the man she desired without the consent of her parents. And uh, this is uh, something we have studied there in this area, and we could see that uh, violence and harassment of the spouses, um, but also the infertility of the man, were also valid reason 
for perpetuating the robbery of women and the enough reason for women leaving the marital home to find a lover. Uh, we also have seen that bad luck to have a chance to keep a wife or spouse uh, may be a reason to move away from where the spouse uh, would, uh, would to find a better place, uh, where the couple can flourish also. And uh, in most cases, the couple who migrates is also looking for land to exploit. It's also one factor which is very determinant in our interviews. And uh, this kind of ent instrumentalization of evil is in fact a strategic form of minimizing damage and escaping local social demand. So we have seen that, this kind of thing. Um, this, the theft of women are also reported in the colonial archives. If you go in Porto Novo, you uh, scrutinize the colonial archives. You can see all these uh, cases described at the time that people had to um, um, used to, um, uh, to steal uh, women and to go far from. Hmm. Uh, that was also one of the main reasons for the immigration of migrants from South Burkina to North Benin. Even now, I have interviewed people who tell me that uh, okay, they come to this part because um, they um, um, because they steal their woman and come to this part because they had problems with their family, they couldn't pay the right, whatever, those kind of different kind of things that they tell you. Um, first, the one who, who steal the woman has acted because it is not often able to face the regular economic and moral demand of marriage. Then he did he did it to perhaps pass their social prohibitions and constructs, uh, but he did it because he agreed that the captive girl uh, to go and live elsewhere to look for land at West Coast. And this is several cases we have seen also. Uh, and we have uh, interviewed people and who have find us different, kinds, different, uh, different stories like this. So in order for the forces to enjoy matrimonial, matrimonial happiness away from the heavy social demand as well as path seem to be the only way out. Uh, the fact that the couple engaged in, uh, in an alliance adventure uh, that has no legitimacy, no guarantee within Coase's family, Coase's family is in fact a real reason to exile, to go to sea and to find new work opportunity often linked to your research for land. Most of the interviews, uh, they were uh, trying to explain this, uh, this kind of thing. Okay. Um, like if you take the Fulani, um, in the celebration of Fulani marriage, Several areas and different places can be put into place, uh, into into play, since the rules of post-nuptial uh, uh, what they call it um, pattern. Uh, you know, uh, you have this very uh, local, uh, and this, you have the other type of uh, <coughs> of also marriages, and they can they, they they most of the time they live they they live in a separate house close to the spouse's parents. Um, it is usually after marriage that the Fulani transhumans become intensively and, and extensive, uh, an intensely and extensive system of production. It is generally limited uh, to the exploitation and extension of natural resources, the over research of pastures, uh, meadows, and water bodies. Uh, thus, the new social relation created by marriage ties involve the possession of animals but also a disposition for the couple, especially the husband, to find new land, pastures, natural resources, uh, rivers, ponds, whatever. And uh, doing the transhumans is thus ecologically degrading the environment, cattle loads, but also regenerating because they said they talk about seabed, seedbed of the grasses left by the animal in frequent in frequented places. But the social cultural dimension of Transhumans, which is often neglected, is an interesting pastoral uh, practice that allows making another reading of social and economic integration. Uh, indeed, transhumans can have a function of exchange because it is often it often brings together households for each from each other. The young members um, of household uh, know uh, they know each other. Uh, they interchange. They have fun. Uh, uh, 
they are looking for an engagement for future marriages. So in this sense, for the, with the Fulani, trans women uh, can lead newly, uh, lead newly married young people to live together. This is also very interesting and we have seen with the Fulani. Okay. Then I, I, I have two points to say and then I conclude. Um, uh, then in my paper, I try to demonstrate that marriage migration can therefore be conceived as social construct with certain moral, social, and environmental demands in which the actors, their disposition to enter in the matrimonial and migratory adventure and their respective roles are defined in the course of the action. So this is something that is going on. But there's marriages, practices, uh, thus they fix the bodies on the ground and better control them. Because in, in, in Northern Ben we have what they call the, the Pulega marriage, which is uh, the boy, he has to dedicate several years to the land, and then after like um, maybe 10 years, they will give him the hand uh, of, of, of the lady, of the young girl. And you have another type of, of, of also of uh, marriage, which is called tandem, and when the, the boy, he meet the girl in the market or uh, public place, and then they run away from the country. You know, these practices, they existed before, but now they are, the tendency is that they are not existing anymore. Uh, anymore. But, but you can see some cases. But now, um, do, not, do not do these tandem things. Uh, when I was interviewing people, the the young girls, they were telling us, okay, the better thing is you get pregnant. Yeah, okay. If you get pregnant, so you cannot, you can, they, they leave you uh, in peace. So you cannot go out from the urban country. This is, this is one of the cases also I have studied. Okay, I know this thing. Okay, but um, then um, in the paper, I, I wanted to show that migrations link it to the fact of marriages and union. And the constant can represent uh, market stakes of social classes. Um, I have given the example of the Diali girls who voluntarily allow to be engrossed by their partners rather than doing development, uh, which is a very illustrative thing. Um, this is I wanted to share with you, and the paper is uh, I think is available in the wider in the wider website, so you can also read it. Uh, and I'm also here to respond to the question. Thank you for allowing me extra time.